Good morning, church. Uh, we're, we're starting again in our series about dealing with God issues, and we talked last week about having false gods, and that those are still a thing, and that we still have to deal with those in our lives, and so we're going to dig a little deeper into that uh, today. And uh, we're going to start with a scripture in Matthew chapter 15, beginning with verse 16. Jesus kind of starts with an insult. Now, you'd think he's talking to the Pharisees, but he's talking to his disciples. They're asking questions about what offends and about uh, being clean and ceremonially clean and all these things. He says, are you still so dull? Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? Natural process, right? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and those defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands doesn't defile them. So what Jesus is saying here is find the source. Uh, those things come out of the heart. So if you got an issue, you, you don't just clean up the issue. you got to deal with the source. Imagine, if you will, that you take a walk down to your favorite park and you go down to the stream, down to the creek, the river, wherever it is, and there's trash in the river. And so you start picking the trash out because this is your favorite spot and you want it to stay clean. And uh, as you pick up trash, you realize a couple hours have passed and you're still picking up trash. And there's still more trash. You come back the next day and you do the same thing. You come back the next day and you do the same thing. Well, obviously there's a problem here. And you can keep going to that spot and going to that spot and picking up the trash. But if you really want to get that creek or that river clean, where do you have to go? You have to go upstream. We've got to find the source of all this trash. Where is it entering the stream and why is it collecting in our favorite spot? And so life's kind of the same way. If we're going to clean up ourselves or we're going to find healing or we're going to find deliverance or we're going to find whatever God wants to do in our life, sometimes we have to go upstream and find out what's happening, where the source is of those things. And we as individuals in the church are notorious sometimes for only working downstream. We like that quick fix theology, right? Oh, if something's not working, uh, they're doing that program over there, maybe we can do that. If this isn't going well in our church, maybe we can do this program. And we think these things are gonna fix us quickly. We do it in our own lives too. If I, oh, I'll just do this differently or I'll just do that differently. Behavior modification was a big thing back in the 80s. When uh, people had issues in their life, we'd say, if you had a gambling problem, just don't go to the casino. If you had a drinking problem, just don't go to the bar. If you got a debt problem, just cut your credit card up. Well, all that's fine and good, and it has some effect. But the reality is these quick-fix theologies don't fix the main problem. They fix a symptom, like we talked about last week. So we have to go back and find the source of where our problems are coming from and understand how we can fix those problems. It's like uh, I might have a weight problem. If I have a weight problem, I say, well, I just need to uh, do this and I can fix it quick. Or we can find the source of why maybe we eat too much or why we uh, do the things we do to, to be unhealthy. All that to say there's always a source, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually, there's a source. For example, worry could be a control issue in our life. We may have a, a problem with worrying all the time. Well, worry's not our problem. The problem is we can't let go of control. We may have a, a problem with fear, and the fear problem may not be our only problem. That just may be a symptom of the fact that we like our comfort, and we, we're so uh, uh, embedded, literally, with our comfort zone that we won't go outside of it. So our comfort zone kind of becomes the God issue here, or our uh, the thing we're looking out for, the control could be our issue, not worry, not fear. If you're a workaholic, maybe it's more about the money. For some workaholics, it's about uh, uh, proving something to someone. For some, it's about getting to a certain level of success. Those things in and of themselves have to be dealt with before we can deal with our, work our, our workaholic tendencies. And so, We've got to go and find the source. There's some ways we can do that. And one of the things we'll find in a lot of these things is when we talk about false gods, the biggest one of all is the God of me. And most of the time, we just have to get ourselves off the throne so God can be on the throne. And we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. But here's a couple of questions. 
uh, that kind of give us some indicators of, of where we are and what's going on in our life? And do we have false gods in our life? Do we have things, sources that we need to deal with that cause some of these symptoms we struggle with? For example, what disappoints you? What disappoints you? Erwin Lutzer, uh, a theologian and, and writer, said this, Have you ever thought that our disappointments are God's way of revealing to us that there are idols in our lives that must be dealt with? What disappoints you? Am I disappointed I didn't get to do this? Or am I disappointed that I didn't turn out this way? Am I disappointed in my career? Am I disappointed in my family? Am I disappointed in my kids? Whatever those things are. Now, that's not to say we shouldn't have disappointments, but if that disappointment is constantly on our mind and constantly what we're working toward and we're trying to overcome that disappointment by being something other than that, maybe it's become too important for us. Maybe we've got to go back and heal that disappointment, that source that causes us to dwell on those things. Because when we dwell on those things, it may tell us where, uh, where our gods are. And uh, we're going to come back to that in a minute. What do you do? What do you complain about the most? What, do you, what is it that you hear yourself or somebody else says, you're always talking about this. You're always complaining about this. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough this. You wish you had a bigger house. All these things, you see, in and of themselves aren't necessarily bad, but if that's the thing that our focus is on all the time, then that thing can become a God in our life and can become a source of other problems. What are we complaining about? If I'm always complaining about needing a bigger house, wanting a bigger house, and that's what I'm working toward and focusing on and putting my energy toward. It's taking up a lot of my space and a lot of my energy. And we have to be careful of that, that that doesn't become more important than what God wants to say in our life. Maybe the house we have is exactly what God wants for us. Maybe he's got a different plan for us altogether. But we have to be sure, careful about where we're focusing. And so it's a great way of looking at it. How do, what do we complain about the most? And look at that. Um, what are we worrying about? Do we worry about losing someone? Do we worry about losing something? Do we worry about losing our security? Again, normal human thoughts, absolutely perfectly normal. But if that worry is so much that it controls the actions that we do and controls the way we deal with those things, if I'm so worried about losing someone that I'll never let them out of my sight, if I'm so worried about uh, security that that I that I'm not generous, or that I'm not uh, that I'm that I, I'm hurting myself or my family because I, I won't let go of the things that I feel secure with, then those things have become a problem area and they've become false gods because we won't let them go and we work toward them and we work for them instead of letting God work in those things and letting God be our security and God be the thing we focus on. So that brings us to, the, to the, the big question, then where's your sanctuary? Where do you go when you're down? Where do you, what do you run to when you're scared? What do you run to when you get worried? What do you run to when life's not going the way you think it ought to? What do you run to uh, when you complain? I listen to a lot of sports talk uh, just because I like it, but it's amazing to me how much, if you listen to that long enough, how much complaining goes on about the home teams, how much complaining goes on. Why didn't they do this, and why didn't they throw that pass, and why don't they trade for this person, why don't they do this? And after a while, you can get caught up in that very easily and, and start complaining about the same things, and all you're focused on is that. Is, do we run to entertainment for our sanctuary? Do we run to sports as our sanctuary? Do we run to the computer? For our sanctuary? Do we run to our friend? Do we run to the kitchen? What are we running to when we feel like we're in need? And that may tell us a lot about where false gods have footholds in our life. If, if comfort food is my thing and my answer every time, that might be a problem and I need to look at that source issue. If uh, I can just turn sports on and kind of fade away and leave my problems behind, again, nothing wrong with that. It's not a bad thing, but if we're using it for what God is supposed to be doing, then it becomes a bad thing. It becomes a problem. Jesus said, it's out of the heart that these things come. What you do on the outside doesn't matter. So we have a lot of Christians today who are trying to do everything right, and on the outside they look good. We go to church, we, we, uh, we serve here and there, but in reality, when when moments come that we hurt or that we're in need, we run to these other gods. We run to the food or the sports or the entertainment or the internet. And we run to those places to fill the place that only God can fill. That's how we know we have a God problem. 
And so we, we have to be careful with those things. So we need to be able to answer that question. Where's my sanctuary? When I'm upset, do I pray? When I'm hurting, do I go to God? When I'm, when I'm troubled or I'm bored or whatever, do I run to God in those times? And we need to be able to say yes to that. Um, we can't always, we don't always, but that seems, needs to be our goal. We could ask a couple more questions. Uh, one in particular, what infuriates you? What makes you mad? That may say something about where we're spending most of our time and what's eating up a lot of our time, which can, by definition, become a God in our life. For some people, it's politics, right? This day and time, politics infuriate people. If something the other side said or something's going on, we get mad and we get into that and we get spend hours debating it and we spend every waking moment talking about it and we're looking it up on the internet, we're watching every feed on the news and it infuriates us and we get all wrapped up into that and all of a sudden, it's getting our energy, it's getting our time, it's getting all that we have and it becomes a God in our life. And that's not what we're supposed to have. So great questions to ask yourself. What disappoints you? What worries you? What do you complain about? What infuriates you? And one final one, what do you dream about? What do you dream about? What are you, what's your dreams? What are the visions in your life that you want? What's the goal? Now, everybody's going to have a different one there. For some, it's just a, a wonderful retirement. For some, it's success. For some, it's a, a family uh, all in good places. Whatever it is. But has God had part in that dream? Has God gotten some say-so in your dreams? Because see, the things we dream about, all good things, please hear me throughout this whole series, all these things in and of themselves are good. We can go back to ancient Israel and they, they worshiped a golden calf and wooden altars and wooden idols. They're just wood. They're just uh, elements of, of the periodic table. There's nothing bad in and of themselves. What's bad is when Israel or whoever put their attention and their time and their energy on those things, then they become dangerous. So there's nothing wrong with having dreams. There's nothing wrong with being angry at something once in a while. There's nothing wrong with uh, wanting more at times. But if those things become so important that they take the place of God as our sanctuary, then we may have identified some sources in our life that are keeping us from places of healing, that are keeping us from truly understanding uh, God's voice in our life. See, God won't share the throne. We talked about that last week. He's not going to do it. Um, and he won't speak over other noises. He just won't. And so we have to be careful. So if there's things going on in your life and things you know that you need God to attend to and places you want to hear from God and places that aren't working in your life right now, then maybe you need to look upstream a little bit and quit trying the quick fixes and quit trying the, the, the easy outs. And let's look back upstream and see where God may be working in our lives. See where the source of pollution is coming from. Jesus said it's coming out of our hearts. That's where sexual immorality and adultery and murder and gossip and all these things come from. So we have to make sure our heart's in the right place and that our hearts own the right thing. And so this whole series is about that. It's about getting and making sure that we're paying attention to the right things. Things are things. Dreams are dreams. Goals are goals. Nothing wrong with any of it. Make sure that God has that first place in your life. Make sure that those things aren't getting in the way of what God can and wants to do in your life. Now next week we're going to talk about what it is to worship. And this is where the heart of it all comes in as we wrap this up next week. But for right now, ask yourself some of those questions. What are my dreams? What infuriates me? What worries me? What am I afraid of? And don't be afraid to look at those things and examine them. And so if we can do that, we're going to find healing and we're going to find some deliverance and we're going to find the power of God that's able to move in ways that maybe we haven't seen him before. Well, God bless you. I pray that as you look into these things and you examine these things, you'll find some places of healing. And join us next week as we talk about where this all kind of comes together and what God wants for us. So we'll see you then. God bless.